spools and you know you're keeping them there longer and while not doing any actual damage uh, and you know you're able to track them better. And finally we have a workstation nugget which is simply the interface for analysts within the Razorback system. They can analyze stuff like the configuration files and um, see all the alerting data but also another cool thing that we have is the ability for analysts to take events, link them together and also provide notes. So it makes it so that when, you know, one shift is done and they're, you know, trying to track people through the network, when the next people take over or even when you go back in time, you're like, you know, I've seen this before, what was it that they did? You can go back and check your notes and, you know, get that kind of historical data in a way that's useful. Okay, so I'm going to give it back to Ryan and he's going to talk to us about, uh, you know, really how they all talk together. All right, so now that we've seen the uh, different pieces of the system, let's take a look at uh, how they work together. Um, all right, so because we designed this as sort of a decentralized distributed uh, framework, all of the different nuggets have to be able to be added and removed fairly easily. And they achieve this via an API function call called uh, register nugget. And we're going to talk a little bit more about the API uh, a bit later. Patrick will get to that. But for now, just know that it essentially lets the dispatcher know that it exists. So if you've got a detection nugget that comes online, it will have prior knowledge of where the dispatcher is, what its IP port combination is, um, and call register nugget, let it know um, what its IP and port are, um, what kind of data types it's handled, uh, it's, it's able to handle, as well as the available number of running threads. Um, that last piece is, is, is mostly just for load balancing reasons. But um, the dispatcher will keep track of all that in its own local routing table. And once it has successfully added each of the different nuggets to the routing table, it uh, sends them back a unique identifier, a nugget ID, which they can then use in all future communications with that dispatcher. All right, so here's, uh, here's an example of data collection. In our case, uh, we're looking at web traffic and SMTP traffic. Um, so they, they come in, the data, uh, the data collector will then take that data and assemble it in such a way that it can be processed. So in the case of downloading a file over HTTP, um, strip out the headers, reassemble the file, package it up and ship it off. Um, that, that collection nugget or data collector will then thread out to the API. We thread out here because we don't want to block on future collection. We just want it, uh, we want our API to kind of like handle things on the side. So the API will then check it against a local cache of signatures. Um, we have actually two types of caches. We have a cache for signatures such as MD5 and file size uh, together. Um, we're using MD5 currently but you can, you can theoretically use any kind of signature that you want. We've also got, um, we've also got a local cache of URLs um, but if it, if it finds that it hasn't seen that previously then it will do a remote cache query through the dispatcher which will then talk to the database and see if the system as a whole or anything, any nugget anywhere on the system has seen it. Um, if that comes back as a cache miss again, then and only then is the data actually shipped off to the dispatcher for detection. Um, if we find that that MD5 and file size already exists in the local cache, we can theoretically block immediately um, depending on what your type of collection nugget is, what, what its functions are, what its capabilities are. Um, the dispatcher then, based on the data type, so the collection nugget is essentially responsible for knowing what kind of data that is, ships it off with a, with a specific data type and the dispatcher will then look up in its routing table the set of all nuggets that are able to effectively analyze those data types. Um, we talked about data type but another kind of type that we keep track of is app type. An app type is the kind of detection that you're doing on, on a specific data type. So say you've got um, a nugget that is responsible for in-depth PDF analyzation um, and you also have an antivirus nugget. You, you, you really want that, uh, that file to pass to both nuggets um, because each offers a different kind of piece of the puzzle. The, if you have two AV nuggets though that are registered as the same app type, the dispatcher is smart enough to not do that. It'll just, uh, it'll avoid redundancy and send the file only once if, if there's only one um, unique type of detection that's available. So the dispatcher then ships those, ships off the data to the detection nuggets and the detection nuggets will perform their analysis and give feedback in the form of alert data or detection results. We'll talk a little bit more about that later too. 
Um, in this case, we've got a PDF nugget, um, and in that PDF that it's analyzing, there is a subcomponent of JavaScript. Now, the PDF the PDF nugget does not have to be aware of how to parse out that JavaScript. It can effectively take that component, ship that off to the dispatcher, re-enter it into the system, and uh, that data then gets shipped off to another nugget, which is, is capable of, of handling that type of data. In this fashion, we can actually break file format, complex file formats down into smaller and smaller parts and address the problem um, in simpler and simpler ways. Um, all of that, all of the detection results, both from the subcomponent and the PDF, uh, the PDF nugget, are coordinated via something called an event ID, and all that information is stored in our database for later access. All right. So finally, when we've got incoming inf uh, available alert information, um, your output, uh, a message is sent from the dispatcher to all available output nuggets. And those output nuggets may or may not be interested in that information. Maybe they're only looking for alert, inf alert data of a certain format. Maybe they're only looking for alert data um, for a specific file. But either way, uh, if they're not interested, then they just ignore the message. If they are, then a message is sent back uh, indicating what kind of information they want. Do they want uh, long versions of the data? Do they want normalized data? Do they want the timestamp, source IP, uh, the, the source IP? Um, and if they do, send back, the, send back that information. Dispatcher uh, packages all that information up for the output nugget. Output nugget then is responsible for formatting it the way that it, it's designed to do. All right, so we talked a little bit about caching. Um, we do this to avoid, as we said, reprocessing files that we don't need to. Um, we can also use it in the case of the local cache for some blocking capabilities. Uh, we store MD5 in size, and as I said, you can use theoretically any signature. But that's what we're working with now. The thing is that once you've added a new nugget, a new detection nugget to the system, or you've issued any defense update, then all entries that we previously determined to be good, that are, that are cached as good, um, or, or we haven't found anything wrong with them, um, are marked as tainted. Now you might ask why we mark them as tainted instead of just remove them from the cache altogether. Well, the reason for that is because we can't, not only can we not say for sure that uh, we're 100 percent confident that those files, according to the new detection, are in fact clean, but um, say we get another file that matches the, uh, the MD5 in size uh, or whatever signature that we're using, we can then alert retroactively on any past events. Um, so if we weren't able to detect it with the old detection, we do detect with the new detection. All past events before that new detection was instituted um, will get, will we'll trigger an alert. And um, with that, we're on to the demo. Handing it back to Patrick. Try to get the microphone in the right place this time. Okay, so what we're going to do for this example is it's going to be uh, SMTP traffic. Uh, we have a PCAP, and that PCAP is uh, an email, the SMTP traffic, where somebody is sending an attachment that is a PDF that has an embedded EXE file, and that EXE file contains a Trojan. So I really wanted to take the opportunity to show how we can have multiple pieces, each one doing its own special part, and providing an alert from that. Okay? Uh, so now. Stay with me while I hopefully can get the hopefully can get the video going because there's no way that I'm putting uh, five devices all trying to talk together live. Okay. Okay. And okay, so I know there's a lot of information up here and the font's tiny. Don't worry about it. Hopefully people can at least see things scrolling. Uh, that's going to be the key part. The actual text doesn't matter, so, so don't worry that you can't read it. Uh, I'll describe what each one of these boxes are and what is being displayed. Okay, so a little bit of a lay of the land. In the top left we have the dispatcher, and that is the piece that has, handles all the communication between the different, between the different components. You know, each one of the uh, nuggets that are in here will register against the dispatcher, and then the dispatcher will take any data that they generate and send it over to the appropriate component. Okay, in the lower, l lower right, that's the SAC. Uh, the SNORT is a collector. It's a modified version of SNORT that we have where we wrote a preprocessor to gather data. Uh, currently it gathers uh, DNS, web, and uh, SMTP data. It just takes it and 
packages up the data that, that we're interested in and sends it to the dispatcher for further analysis. Okay, next in the upper right is SMTP parser. Its job is to take SMTP data that has been collected off the wire, take the SMTP header data, use that as metadata, put that into the, into the database for the correlation information that we were talking about earlier, but also the key part that is relevant to the demo is it will analyze the mail messages and if there are MIME components, it will split all the MIME components out and send it back to the dispatcher for further analysis. Okay, and in the lower right is the PDF parser. Uh, it is, it finds known vulnerabilities in PDFs, but also if it finds embedded objects, such as an EXE file, it will then extract that data, send it back to the dispatcher, and then it will go to another nugget, such as the one in the middle, which is ClamAV. Uh, so ClamAV has been made into a nugget for our system and provides the, all the features that ClamAV has in nugget form. Oops. Play. Okay, right here uh, we are just showing, uh, this is an interface that was made uh, just to show alert data, uh, just showing that it's clean, there's nothing in the database. Just a moment. Okay, the first thing that's going to happen is the dispatcher is going to be started. That's the one that is in the upper left corner. You can see that it has all the UUIDs of the different types of components that are handled, um, as well as the different file and data types. And then the next piece that is going to be started is the SMTP parser in the upper right. You can see on the left where the defense routing table on the bottom lists all the nuggets that have been registered as well as the file type that it handles. Now it's going to start up Clam AV, and again it will update the defense routing table on the left. In a moment, there we go. And finally, we'll start the PDF. And finally, we'll start up the PDF parser in the lower right. And now we have a system that is sitting there waiting for data that is uh, available for parsing. Okay, so let's make it do something. On the lower right is the SAC. Uh, it is the piece that is reading the PCAP and sending it all through the data. There's a lot that happens right here. So we're going to pause it in the middle of, of operation so we can talk a little bit about what's going on. And there you go. What's happened so far is the PCAP was read. It has extracted all the SMTP data, sent it over to the dispatcher. The dispatcher says, hey, this is SMTP data. Let's send it over to a handler for this goes over to the SMTP parser in the upper right. The SMTP parser extracts all the MIME data, says, oh, there's a PDF file. This needs to be analyzed further. And that gets sent back to the dispatcher. The dispatcher then takes that, oh, it's actually in the lower, lower left, you can see where the PDF parser has gone through the PDF and said, hey, there's a, an embedded executable in here. That's not good. In addition to that, let's send the executable back to the dispatcher for further analysis which then goes over to clam AV in the middle and says, I have detected that there is a Trojan in this, virus, in this executable. So in a moment we will see the alert. Technical difficulties in a video. <laughs> there it is. Okay, so now we're going to reload the alert thing. And you can see that we have the two alerts. The top is the PDF that was found, and then the bottom shows the Clam AV alert. Here's the original Clam AV alert, it says this is bad stuff. But now we're going to go back and show you the PDF that has the embedded executable. In the interest of providing as much information as you possibly can to make sure that you have everything you need to do an analysis, we've actually broken down the, the PE file using a PE analyze function to then dump all the data and provide the uh, analyst you know, the ability to then do further uh, reverse engineering if necessary. Okay. And that is it. <laughs> See if I can get back over to here. From current slide. Okay. I'm going to send it back to Ryan so he can tell us, tell you about the different types of nuggets and capabilities that are currently in the system. Patrick, you're way too tall. All right, there we go. Okay, so part of the reason that we're here talking to you today is that we want to kind of solicit your participation in the development of new nuggets.